How's it going, folks? It's pre-intro Jack here, just with two little bits of news before we get into things today. I'm afraid there is no funny intro. I, I think they're amusing, even if not all of you do. Firstly, just a little bit of a heads up. There was a video yesterday. YouTube didn't seem to push it out to everyone. So if you missed it, go check it out. Second bit of info just for you is a PSA that the upload schedule is going to alter slightly here on the channel. We are going to be uploading Mondays till Saturdays. Sunday becomes a day of rest for me, and it also doubles up as an opportunity if you fall behind with the series during the week. Sundays, you know, you can go back, catch up. Anyway, I do hope you go on to enjoy today's video. If you want to help me out and be an algorithm ultra, drop a like on it right now. Let's see if we can hit a thousand likes. That would be great to see. And other than that, today's a big one. Two games at the top of the table. Let's see how we get on. What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 12 of Park 2 Primera here with Racing Santander. Today we start on the profile of Fran Kabir. A Fran Kabir who last episode he got his first goals for the club. If you missed it, do go check out yesterday's video. It was a double header today. As you perhaps already know, it's another double header. We're all about the doubles at the moment. And well, Kabir is all about the goals at the moment. Eight goals in five games. This man, after a little bit of a slow start, we've played him in his position. We've started playing him as a striker. It, it turns out that to get the most out of a striker that you sign everyone, I know mind blown this, you play them in their natural position. He has been absolutely top draw, and while we have played three matches since you were last here, we are into mid-February, and uh, well, today we are going to be taking on Ponferradina and also Pontevedra, the two teams ahead of us in the league. These are two matches that if we win, immediately back into title contention, immediately you'd back us to get promoted with just eight games left of the season after today. Any kind of slip-up? questions to be asked and really we remove fate from being in our own hands you know if we can win these games and win the remaining games they can't catch us if we lose here we are going to be hoping that they slip up which is not the situation we want to find ourselves in anyway since you were last here three matches played in all competitions and one of note a defeat against Real Sociedad's B team not a good game not a good performance to be completely honest we were outclassed in this game, first 10 minutes were action-packed, and well, we got a goal. And we got a goal through Bicho, back post header. You know, it's one of his two tricks that he knows as a horse. Really nice goal for him. Unfortunately, less than two minutes later, they get an equaliser. Questionable defending, I think, at best by the right back there as it broke through. And uh, well, going into the second half, not long into it either, they grabbed a goal. Again, defending... Not so convincing here. I think on that occasion, it was Matic who looked a little subpar. 2-1 it finished. We had lots of time to try and get back into the game. But we really struggled to create stuff. And uh, well, we, with this defeat, we dropped out of the top two, which was an immediate cause for concern. The only silver lining really was that in our next game, we were taking on FC Andorra. Last time we played them, we beat them 7-0. This time when we played them... We beat them 6-0. I don't really think they're whipping boys of the league, but for whatever reason, we just seem to do really, really well against them. And as you can see here, Kabir, four goals to his name, a 10.0 average rating. Things we want to see. Mahika as well, playing out on the right-hand side. That swap that we did last episode, kind of repeated it here, worked wonders. And while we followed that up with another good little win, this time against Verol, 4-1 win, uh, really, really impressive, especially because Farol were unbeaten in their previous five or six home games in the league. So they were, you know, a team in some really good form. Kabir grabbed two, Bicho scored from the spot, and then Pablo getting a goal. I feel like Pablo this year, despite being a key player, has perhaps been a little understated this season. I don't feel like he's been at the forefront of everything we did, quite like he was last year. Of course, last year, three goals, 12 assists. This year, he's already matched the goal tally, assists a little bit down, also worth noting, he has played significantly more football this year, really avoided injury, continued his development though, maybe not improved quite to the extent that I hoped he might over the course of the first, I suppose, year and a half here at the club. But despite his struggles with injuries, he's a better player than when we got him, and he's still only 18. Plen plenty of gas left in the tank. In terms of the transfer window, of course, it has slammed shut since we were last here. We've done nothing in it. I wish I could come out and make up some exciting, extravagant story. Nothing is really happening. Uh, you can see here, though, Matty Castillo is leaving us. He's decided to leave at the end of his contract. He's one of the players in our B team. 
not overly fussed about that. And while there is a player here who he's existed here for a little while and it only dawned on me last night, I haven't talked about him. I've not bigged him up. Hayden McDonald, a name that I can say, uh, an Australian youngster who plays for UCAM. Uh, UCAM Mercia are the team that Di Vicente joined us from. He is a really, really young forward. His contract was expiring, I think, at the end of the year. And uh, as you can see here, we have agreed to sign him. He will be joining us in, the, well, the, the 1st of July. He looks not bad. For a 17-year-old, we've signed on a free. I'm not going to complain too much. And while speaking of players that I've not talked about, Camelo Nunes needs a mention. Another player who I agreed to sign this year, another player who actually joined us this year, he was released by Kelme uh, at the end of last season. Uh, he was playing in the under-19 division for them. But as a free agent, he popped up on our radar via our scouts, decided to snap him up on a freebie. He could be the next great thing. He could be the next great invention since sliced bread. He could also end up being really, really average. A player with really good current ability is technicals a top draw. The kind of player who, if we had a massive injury crisis, I wouldn't hesitate to throw in up front. Uh, but maybe a few question marks over his potential. Could be the kind of player that in Football Manager has generated as good as he's going to get. I mean, for us at youth level, he has 21 goals in 14 games. So he's doing pretty well. Just a player worth having on your radar could prove to be very, very useful down the line. And well, in terms of the upcoming games, we've got the most difficult of the two to kick things off. Pomfredina, both these matches at home, but Pomfredina, top of the league, going very, very strong. They actually have a game in hand. So even though a win here would see us leapfrog them, they would then go ahead of us again, should they get the win. That said, I'm not going to look at this as any less important as the game against Pontevedra. The reality is... We need to win them both. Uh, these are two teams who have been in very, very good form. If we look at the league table, you can see here Pontevedra have won the last five on the bounce. Pomfredina, I don't think they've lost in a little while. If we look here, they lost in the Copa del Rey to Valencia. Their last defeat in the league came against Unionistas in uh, October. It's now the middle of February. It's been four months. Maybe we're going to dish the pain out today. So anyway, in terms of team selection for today's game, no messing around. We're going into things at full strength. Worth noting, Frank Abia, unfortunately for us, has a little bit of an injury. Nothing major, a tight groin, given his recent goal scoring record. He's got eight goals in his last five. I don't feel like I can drop him for a game as big as this one. So he is going to get the nod up top. A couple of players were rotated for our most recent game, so they've had a little bit of a chance to recover. The fixture congestion has been a little relentless. You will also notice Diva Sente is in the team. Really hoping he is not going to let me down. No mosh pits today, please, Rafa. No sendings off. No pushing people on corners. Just be well behaved. I mean, if he lets me down again, I might I might lose patience with him. But I'm going to give him a chance alongside just Andy. Mahika is playing out on the right. That is because since Kabir's played up front, Mahika's played there and not played too badly. I do feel a little bit bad for Cedric, although despite a really hot start to this season, his performances have definitely declined. And whilst he has been becoming a more frequent substitute rather than a starter, he's the kind of player who turns up and gets, you know, a load of goal contributions and just is a massive influence on the game. Or single-handedly, he drags us down and kind of leaves us a little toothless up front. But nevertheless, as an option on the bench, I think he's very good. The rest of the team kind of picks itself. Carassa, I'm still wanting to look to sign permanently, I think, from Porto. His contract is up at the end of next season. It may be that we look to renew him for another year on loan, if possible. 11 assists in 24. That's pretty blooming impressive. But anyway, let's get into this game. This is a big one. They've not lost in four months. We've won our last two. That's not nearly as impressive, is it? I'm going to tell the players I've got faith in them. This is a big game. Frank Kabir, he's kind of just elevated his game to a whole new level, I feel like, in this recent month. I'm really hoping he's going to be able to keep that going into this game here. And while we have an early chance, Mahika, Di Vicente dinks it, is headed off the line by a mo. I think that was a cross, not a shot, but... Well, we've still got the ball here. It's Carassa in the wide area. Options in the middle. Can he pull it back? He does. Di Vicente's there. And he is on a road to redemption. Can he, you know, start that road and start walking down it today with a goal contribution or two? Lopez at left back now, now getting forward. He whips it in, goes out for a corner. Uh, I mean, sustained possession, pinning them in. Can we make something happen here? Pablo over it. The number 10 whips it in. Matic's header, though, over the crossbar. But inside the first three minutes... We look up for it. I feel like Oscar Hill and Matic this year at centre-back. I've not talked about them like last year. I don't feel like they're as good as they were last year. 
That's offside. We're, we've been let off there. I'm not sure what Matic was doing. Anyway, Carassa with the throw in to Pablo. Edge of the box to Just Andy, who pulls the trigger. Gazaniga tips it onto the crossbar, and it is going to be hooked away for a corner. Half an hour gone here. Ball on the near side. Carassa to Mejica. Carassa, Di Vicente to Just Andy, who could go wide to Lopez, and as Lopez has got a lot of room to roam in, it feels like, here at left back. Options queuing up in the middle. Pablo's one of them. It's blocked. Bicho has two shots. They're both blocked. It's not cleared away, though. It is now. Chance after chance after chance and straight into another highlight. This is relentless. We are penning them in. But whilst we have this spell of dominance, we need to get our noses ahead. Mejica through. Can he finish it? It's blocked again. It falls to Pablo who tries to play it inside. Oh, we could live to regret all these chances. We've been so good. So, so good. There's just a lack of goals. There's a lack of end product. There's a lack of cutting edge. Maybe it could come here, though. Beat Joe. I mean, if it's not a header and it's not a penalty, he's not scoring it. I'm not sure what I'm expecting. Worth noting, in the other game going on towards the top of the table, Pontevedra currently drawing. So a win here could be huge if we can make it happen. At half time, it's a nil nil. Both teams have only one shot on target. You would have to say we've had the better of the chances. I feel like we've been all over them in that half and we've done everything but score. I just have to hope that the flow of this game is going to go in the same way and that with a half-time kind of team talk, they're not going to come out renewed, refreshed, perhaps with new ideas. Pablo with it. Now back with just Andy. Plays it into Di Vicente. Mejica takes it down. Kabir goes down. It's going to be a penalty. Just Andy wants it. He's not having it. Bicho is going to take... Two minutes into this half. He's got a great goal scoring record. This is perhaps the most nerve wracking penalty, the most high stakes penalty he's taken in our colours. It is saved. And he just runs the rebound out for a goal kick. I feel like our luck with penalties has been absolutely just bizarre in this save game. I've never had so many penalties. And all the big ones we seem to miss. Any other player on a yellow card, I'd be concerned. I'd be thinking about taking them off and stopping them from playing as a ball with a midfielder, but not just Andy. Andy is restrained. He is well-behaved. He's looked very good here. I feel like we're considerably weaker when he's not on the pitch, and so I don't really want to take him off, even if he's on a booking. Pablo, Mejica, Kabir's in the middle, kind of on his lonesome. Bicho back post. Carassa now on the ball, drifting inside. He looks to get it in. Castellano. Gets rid of it. And they're now going to look to maybe catch us out here. K on the far side. Can the tackle go in? It's not going to. Lolo Pier is through and they score. Completely against the runner play. But for all the play we've dominated, for all the chances we've had, we've not been able to do enough. And I think I am going to have to do some stuff here. Apparently just Andy's going to take the penalty. I mean, what penalty is this? I'll change it. Can we go back? Can I? Can we rewind time and beat Cho take the penalty again? Please? Oh, dear. <laughs> right, we've got to react to that. Mahika's had a bad game. I'm going to bring in Cedric elsewhere. You know what? I'm going to take off beat Cho and I'm going to bring in uh, Zach out on the left-hand side. I feel like uh, Hardy and Zach have not played as much out in the wing, the two kind of Barcelona youngsters. Our fixture congestion hasn't been too bad. This is the kind of game where I need to bring them on and I need them to have an impact. We have had 17 shots, but unfortunately, we've only had the same number of shots on target as our opposition. And they have taken their chances. They have been clinical. We need to craft out something, and maybe we can do so here. Di Vicente inside to Kabir. Cedric on the overlap. Might look to cut in on his left foot. He goes down. It's going to be a penalty. It's given straight away. I don't even get to change it, but it's with just Andy, and that's probably for the best. Andy, you can do it. He does do it. Maybe I should have let him take the last one. Friendship ended with Bicho. Andy is my new best friend now. 1-1. One, one. You can't say we don't deserve that. We have been rampant in this game, and that is a great little penalty. Putting it into the bottom keeper uh, corner. Keeper goes down for it. Can't get there. Well, could we make a comeback happen? There's a time for a comeback of the season. This is it here and now. There is 16 minutes left. Four minutes left. I've already switched to attacking. I don't really want to change out too much more. Two minutes left. Is there late drama? Ball whipped in. It's going to be headed away. But Cedric is now over it. On off the bench, Cedric 
He goes down. It's another penalty. What is happening? What is happening? I mean, Andy, 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 Andy. This is big. He's had a long wait. Could he get a second of the game? He can. He puts it in the bottom corner. I thought for a moment he'd put it wide. Oh, I'm, I'm such a fan of him. It's getting to the point where I might just write Andy's name on the bottom of my foot. You know, like Woody in Toy Story. I, maybe I'd need to get a tattoo of Andy's name on my foot. I mean, give him the keys to the city. It's going to finish 2-1 here. We deserve that so much. It's not just Andy. It's just Andy. Three penalties in that match. A sign of the dominance we had of possession. Really penned them in. Had the ball in their area frequently. Forced defensive errors. My, oh my, oh my. That was nowhere near as comfortable as perhaps it should have been. 2-1 it finishes. And with that result, we go into second. Pontevedra. Of course, they scored a penalty in their game against Harrow. What that means is that if we could beat Pontevedra, we are guaranteed to be in the automatic promotion spots to end today's episode. I really, really want to do that. Pontevedra, you can see here, six game unbeaten away run comes to a halt. To be fair to them, they were a tough cookie to crumble, a tough nut to crack. They were a pain in the arse, if I'm being completely honest. Either way, the next game against Pontevedra is a week away. I'm going to go forward to that. Hopefully, we can get a win here. Really state our claim. Hoping for a slightly more convincing performance than what we've just seen there. I feel like we got lucky. Okay, guys, we are back here for game number two. We are going to be taking on Pontevedra. We've just taken on the team who were first. We've knocked them off their throne. The crown has been handed on to Pontevedra. We're going to be looking to beat them. Of course, when we played them previously... It didn't really go to plan, did it? It really, it really didn't go to plan. They are such a surprise package. You can see here, they beat us 2-1. Of course, they scored from the penalty spot in that game. We were winning. That, that was good, wasn't it, when we were beating them that time? Um, yeah, they're a very, very good team. They're currently top of the league, exceeding all expectations. The kind of team that I thought would splutter. You know, they'd run out of fuel. They'd be struggling at this point. At the moment, they're going from strength to strength. We really, really desperately need to beat them to go ahead of them. It is also worth noting that Pomfredina, they played their game in hand that they had. They actually drew against Amorbieta. They did not have a lot of rest after the game against us. Uh, so that makes the top of the table even closer than it already was and makes this result even more important than it already perhaps looked on the surface. So in terms of team for today's game... It's the same team. I'm trying not to rotate things too much. We've got long rests between games. I think this is our best team. It's quite definitively our best team as well, I think. I think that step down in quality from our starting 11 to kind of the backups is quite steep. So with that in mind, I don't want to change things unnecessarily. Obviously, you're going to hope that just Andy has a game to remember. And uh, well, perhaps that we can turn up in a slightly more convincing manner. I don't want to be relying on penalties to win this game. I want to see us play our natural game dominate the ball, and hopefully bully a team who they have confidence. I don't think they have the quality to sit at the top of the table. I want that kind of opinion to be justified through a performance here. Anyway, throw in really early on. It's going to be Pablo bringing the ball forward for us. He's on a little bit on his loan to here, although Kabir is in the middle. Bicho now with the ball to Di Vicente. Kabir gets on the end of it. It's blocked once. Falls back to him. The keeper makes a huge stopping goal. The keeper, he shrieks out, it's me, Mario. Makes the stops, and unfortunately, we probably should have been a goal ahead within the first minute. And then Matic's header is stopped by the keeper. I really don't hope this is a sign of things to come today. I don't know if I could handle a superstar goalkeeping performance from them. I will say that having Pomfredina and Pontevedra as our two main title kind of rivals this year, it gets blooming confusing. It, like we need to change the name slightly. I realise they're not that similar at all, but in my head, they get, they get muddled up. And, uh, well, as I talk about being muddled up, we're just seeing a load of set-piece chances, a load of shots going over the bar for either team. But it looks like, on the face of it, this game is not going to remain nil-nil for long. This looks like a game where the teams are going to want to score goals. Falls to Lopez. Pablo now with it. Di Vicente through to Kabir. He's got to score this one. He will score this one. He's a little bit camera shy at times. He wasn't shy on that occasion. He tucks it away. And Di Vicente, maybe he's walking that road of redemption. Because this pass here was really, really nice. Perfectly weighted. Kabir used his acceleration and pace to get him behind. Shifted the ball onto his left foot. Really, really nice finish into the bottom corner. 
Halfway through the first half, we are looking pretty dominant at this point, if I might say so myself, but I want to see more goals. I want to see us extend our lead, which on, on occasion we score goals for fun, like we did against FC Andorra. There are just some games where we struggle to break teams down. Hopefully this is not going to be one of those as well. It's knocked around superbly. What a lovely goal that is. Kabir with a really intelligent kind of nod down. And then Mahika's finish, not, not too bad. I think it was on his weaker left foot as well by Mahika there, which is absolutely nuts. Carassa really made it all happen by creating some space to then allow Di Vicente to put the ball into the box. But the finish itself right into the top bins. Pick that one out. I've noticed as well here in the other game, Pomfredina currently 1-0 down to Real Union. Of course, they lost to us. They drew midweek. They're now playing their third game in a, the space of eight days, which, you know, for semi-pro teams is pretty intense. Maybe it's going to catch up on them. I'm going to hope that we can, well, not have the fixture congestion catch up on us here as we're bringing it forward. Bicho tries to get it into the middle. Cut it out to Carasa. Mahika's got a knock. May look to take him off, but not before this highlight's over. Pablo... Plays it into the bottom corner. Carassa involved again. We are having joy down that right-hand side. And uh, well, we talked about the fact that Torre had three goals, the same number he had last year, not anymore. And that might well be the pick of the bunch. 40 minutes gone here, and this is a really, really good first-half display. Mejica, he's struggling, isn't he? Let's bring in Cedric. Let's not risk injuries unnecessarily, especially in a game which, whilst... Now, I don't want to call it too prematurely, but I do feel like, based on what we've seen in this game, 3-0 should be the game dead. I mean, Machado's not dropping the ball there, so I'm, I'm feeling confident this is going to be a good day, I hope. After a very odd 45 minutes, we find ourselves three goals to the good. They have created next to nothing. We've not had as much of the ball as we've ha perhaps had in some of our other dominant displays like this one, but when we have had it, we've looked really, really good going forward. Looks super deadly, and well, hopefully we're going to be able to keep that momentum going. And of course, hopefully Pomfredina are going to remain a goal down. We will have a close eye on that game as it closes out. As well here, 15 minutes have gone already. Their right mid is on a 5.9. Okay, Andy's picked up a booking. I'm not going to risk a, risk a red card here. Let's bring in Reco. They're not putting up much of a fight. We can take our foot off the gas a little bit, just relax. Save our legs. Of course, after this game, there is going to be eight matches left of the season we are right into the tail end of things and well confusion reigns supreme at the back i feel like Machado and it might it must have been matic i think had a miscommunication there either way gonzalez has popped in at the back post Ramey played it down the line to Gui whips it in and then i mean Machado. Machado's, you know he's young we can give him time i'd be lying if i was saying going into next season alongside the center backs the goalkeeping position isn't what I'm looking and thinking. Maybe we need something new there. Di Vicente to Kabir, by the way. Bicho, his efforts blocked. They are defending so deep here inside their six-yard box. It was a great block. Ten minutes left, two goals to the good. I want to sit here and relax, but to be honest, I'm not going to relax until we get another or time continues to progress because there's still plenty of time for action as Bicho brings it forward. It was so good until the finish. I think we all imagined the finish was going to be better than it was there. Cedric, not done a great deal since he came on off the bench. Maybe he can make something happen here. He's going on his lonesome. Lays it off to Pablo. Already has one goal. That's blocked. Falls back to Di Vicente, though, who plays it forward. Pablo, let's go, my son. Goal number five of the season. Not as flashy as his last one, but a nice little counter-attack. Puts us 4-1 up. And I'm going to say it now. Game, set, and match. And whilst I'm not quite ready to utter the words future champions or future promoted side, these performances today, they move us in that direction. Two really big results against rivals. Two rivals who earlier on in the year, they, they embarrassed us. They, they humbled us a little bit. But we've brought them back to our own backyard. You know, home field advantage in our favour. You'd have to say that you know, despite the, the theatrics, shall we say, of last game and all the penalties, this game, by comparison, we've never really looked like losing. We have been so far on top, and it is now just a case of waiting for the referee's whistle. The game is done, referee. Anyway, that is going to do it. A huge, huge result here. 4-1. Definitely the easier of the two games. 
But make no mistake, that is a result that really gives me confidence. Elsewhere, uh, Ponferradina lost 1-0 to Real Union, so they're crumbling towards the end of the year now. They've had all this momentum, they've been doing so well, and it has been sapped away from them. You can see we are now three points ahead of them. Now, considering they were ahead of us with a game in hand, it's quite a change in direction and complexion. The win against Pontevedra puts us ahead of them. You can see our goal difference of plus 50. Comfortably the best in the league. I feel like we've been the best team this season. I think it's starting to show now. I'm really hoping that in this tail end of the year, we're going to kick on. We're going to make this title ours. And when we're back, we're going to be having a party next episode. Anyway, looking ahead to the games on the horizon, I think the best thing to do is really play this by ear, see how the end of the season plays out. At this point, I'd like to think it's not going to go down to the wire and I'm going to need to do two or three matches live to end the season. Uh, it's going to be a case of seeing where we're at. Also worth noting, we have still got to play Deportivo. It's only in a couple of days' time, so I'm not going to do that one next time. But we have got a youth intake on the horizon. That will be happening tomorrow at the very least. I say tomorrow... It's not tomorrow. Sunday's tomorrow. It's my day off tomorrow. I need to get this in my head. Jack, you're allowed to have a break, mate. But yes, thank you for the support. I hope you've enjoyed today's double header. These ones do take a little bit more effort to do. There's significantly more editing involved in trimming the fat off matches. If you have enjoyed it, show your appreciation. Drop a like on the video. I'll see you guys in a couple of days' time. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.